And as always, code is on GitHub. This is my username, Captain Midnight, and Primrose. I'll include this in the uh, chat window there. And we are going to go to primroseeditor.com. So you can see it's kind of tilting right now because it's reading my Oculus Rift. What does this look like for all of you? So this is a uh, this is a text editor application right now. I'm gonna put my headset on. Am I even on? Yeah, I'm on. And go to the VR view. Okay. So what you're seeing here is a live editable world. That uh, that sun, that mountain, the ground, the the ocean. It's all defined within this code here. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of the mountain right now because it's actually a little. It's actually way too many objects right now. So delete. Delete the mountain. And it should update. Oh, unexpected token. There's an unexpected token. So I get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a error readout here. And I guess it's this guy here. That's the problem. Okay. And so then there, the uh, the mountain is gone. Now, what else can we do today? Let me get rid of the sand. So that's gone. You can sort of see. Let's go click off of the area here. Come over here. So this is a big hole in the universe. This uh this particular demo does not have realistic physics. Um so we can stand over here. Come back here. Oops, what have I done? Let's let's take a look at some of these uh, some of the functions that we have available. Since I'm sitting right here, this uh, this box here is what's called is the project Primrose Editor. Um, and so I've written a text editor that draws to an HTML5 canvas element, and uh, and so it uh, it does all the all the syntax highlighting and all of the line numbering. Um, but you can also use it as a basic text element. So here this is another editor window and then here this is a third editor window. We'll get a little closer to it. So you know I've got I've got a small API that I've been developing for being able to live program um, live program environments here. So we've got logging, we can put objects onto other objects and we can place them in in three space. We can set up lights and then you would place it you would put it on on a scene. For example, I'll, I'll do a light here in a second. Um, a brick is is any of these any of these blocks. Are set up as bricks right now. Um, a quad, a brick is made up of quads. Well, a box is made up of, of quads, and then a brick is a texture on a box. So everything is set up to be very composable. A hub is, is sort of just a, a, a combining object. 
a sphere is is just geometry. So like box and sphere are just geometry, and shell is uh, it's an inside out sphere. So that um, makes it so that we can we can do things on the inside of a surface. And then textured. With textured, we uh, we can actually create a bunch of different things. Um, it's basically being able to add uh, a solid color or uh, a texture image or a primrose text box to something. Okay, let's let's see if we can goof around here a little bit. I'm going to delete all of this. And now I'm going to bring some of it back. I'm going to delete down to there. When you create the environment, you can also define an update function that gets called once every frame and it tells you how much time elapsed. It gets called once every frame and it tells you how much time elapsed since uh, the last update was called. And so then, then from there, this is not going to run well because I've deleted an object. And then you return that update function and, uh, and then that's how, the, that's how the application knows um, how, what, what should be running. Let's make that 25. Let's make that 0. There we go. So now we have water. Let's change water to grass. Woo! That's pretty cool. So we're surrounded by grass. Let's change... Let's keep it like that for now. Um, so start, I, I just end up, the, the start here, it's really just defining that corner over there as the start. If it was zero, zero, it would be right underneath our feet, and so then the entire, the entire ground would, would shift off that way. You know, it would be, it would, it, the other corner would be over that way. Step up here again, and, uh... But I want to I want to change something here. I want to I just tried to look down at my keyboard. Let's have oh a width and a height. It's a little uncomfortable. Okay. Um, actually, let's call that length. This is going to be divided by two. This is point divided by two. Oops. My syntax highlighting is a little off right now. It thinks this is a uh, a regular expression, so I'll have to fix that. I, I'm not quite sure how to tell the code the difference between. A, uh, an, a, uh, an arithmetic expression and a regular expression. So I might uh, I might just get rid of highlighting um, regular expressions completely just to just to make it nicer. And then with here, So now let's make this ten. Oh look. Let's make this fifty. Alright. I'm gonna click off the editor. Actually I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the editor completely. Control shift E. And we got ourselves sort of like a sort of like a football pitch or whatever. Okay, let's bring the editor back. There it is. Okay, now let's have a, let's make a paddle. 
um, it's going to be about what are some of the oh let me make this out of rock now let's make it out of deck I like the deck texture deck and it's going to be width divided by four I'm not sure if this requires an integer. I think it does. So I'm just going to make sure it's always an integer. One and one. I'm going to put that on start. I'm going to put it at let's do five. Let's put it up three and keep it at zero. Okay. There is. So there's the object I just created. I have apparently limited the the distance I can walk um, in my code artificially, but that's not a problem. Let's come back. Oh, me over there. Let's make this let's go back to twenty-five and twenty-five. Cool. Let's do heard somebody chat at me. <laughs> so if you're just arriving, again, this is, uh, this is my virtual reality live programming text editor called Primrose. And it's all about being able to edit objects on the fly um, with syntax highlighting, with high fidelity, you know, I've got a little bit of a uh, documentation here on how it can be used. Um, there's a there's a little bit of a performance issue right now, um, but it's because I've done some stupid stuff here. Uh, I'll I'll be able to fix that eventually. Um, but right now, I'm just demonstrating the basics of how this works. So let's do a second paddle. And we're gonna make this one rock. And it's gonna also be paddle width. And it's gonna be one width. And, okay, one by one. And we're gonna put it on the start of the scene, of course. We're, gonna, we're basically setting the origin there. And again, it's going to be at width. At play height. But it's going to be at length. Okay. Hide the editor. And there it is. Right behind us. Oh, nope, I'm stuck in it. Where are we? There we go. So the idea here is sort of... Um, I'm starting to make like a little palm game. Right in the middle. Here. Bring back the editor. Where is... Oh, we were there. Um, I'm gonna hide that way first for a 
second. Now I can come back. When the editor is visible, the controls change. The um, you know when you're actually selected on the control, hitting the keyboard is focused here. So even if I hit WASD, it should make me move. You know what would normally make me move without the editor uh, is is sending key commands here. So I have to kind of change back and forth. Also, uh, without the editor in view, mouse movement doesn't move the cursor. Doesn't move the cursor. It moves your body. So let's do a ball now. Ball. Put. Fill. Water. One one one. On. Start. At. With by two. Like. Uh. Is that right? Wather. Wather. There's no wather. It's water. And play height. Length. Okay, there it is. Womp. So, now. Let's do... Alright, let's move it now. If all dot position dot x is less than zero, um, let's have ourselves. Oh, we've got some error codes here. We've got some error. Delete backspace. Make sure I'm on the keyboard right. Ball dx equals dot random. That all do I equals uh, three. Let's see, like, oh no, that's gonna be way super fast. Ah, uh, uh, no, it'll probably be fine. We'll see. We will see. Okay. And. Helps that I know how to type so well. All right, now ball dot position dot x plus equals d ball dx times dt ball dot position dot y plus equals ball dy times dt. Let's see if it moves. I think it's moving. Where is it? Oh, it's crazy! It's crazy! I did it wrong. Up, get into place. This should be. I named it wrong. Z. 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 Missed one. Come up here. Way too fast. Let's slow it down. Let's 
speed it up. There we go. Hide the editor away. Where did it go? There it is. So there it is. There's the ball moving around. Bounce. So that's kind of the basics of how to use the Primrose editor and you know to do live live programming of uh, of your environment around you. Um, I don't have any interaction yet. I'll be working on that eventually. Actually, I'll be working a bit on that today. I'm using uh, a leap motion device, and uh, I'm going to try to get it working again. I had it working once before and then I changed how I rendered the graphics to represent it where you were putting your hand. Um, but, you know, there is the minus, uh, what's around there? Minus the, uh, oh, somehow I edited text with that open, with it closed. Minus the collision detection, this is, you know, this is a really basic pawn game. Okay, I'm going to take this off.